What's going on, everybody? It is your boy, Dylan Matthews, back at it again with the Hometown Take Podcast, Episode 7, coming at you right now. What is going on, everybody? It's been a while since we talked. I'm sorry. I'm sorry it's been so long. I've been dealing with work and a whole bunch of other stuff, but I do have exciting news to bring you to bring you guys. You know, when I come back after, you know, a little stint away, I come correct. I will come correct. I have finally gotten all the equipment to start doing this podcast from home and adding video. That's right, adding video. There will be a video element added to this, and I have another podcast coming soon. So I got some things in the works that are very close. I told you in the beginning I had some stuff coming soon. There will be some collaborations coming soon. There will be a lot of good stuff coming soon, a lot more of nice content from your boy. So be on the lookout for it. I hope you are doing well after that note. I hope you all are healthy, safe, blessed, So let's go ahead and get into it, guys. What I'm going to be talking about here today in episode seven, we have a lot to catch up on, a lot. So we're just going to get into everything. Of course, I have to, have to, have to talk about the NBA playoffs. I have to talk about the NBA draft lottery. I have to talk about my Braves. But first, we're going to start off with the NBA playoffs, my Nuggets. My Nuggets let me down. I did want the Nuggets to win. I just started to have a warm, fuzzy feeling about the Nuggets. Not like that, but I just like the way they play. Don't get me wrong. I'm happy Portland's in the Western Conference Finals. They're very deserving. Dame is clutch. Crazy clutch. I like C.J. McCollum. I like their pieces. Canner did a valiant effort playing with the separated shoulder. I like the Denver Nuggets. It, it was, I, excuse me. I like the Portland Trailblazers. I just, it was just something about the Nuggets that I like, man. Jokic, Jamal Murray, balling. I just wanted to see the Nuggets win, but that's just me. I like Portland too. I think Portland actually is matched up better with for Golden State. I think they're suited better to take on Golden State and perhaps upset Golden State. Looking at it now, that they're down two nothing. Saying a different word, but hmm, especially after that game one, showing how that they were going to play that pick and roll defense. Granted, they did fix it in game two a little bit, but Steph Curry still went off for 37, four threes, 11 for 11 from the free throw line. He was still kind of doing whatever he wanted. Klay Thompson had 24. I mean, Damon McCollum did their things, you know, but still, yeah, it was just, yeah. Hmm. I'm not so sure anymore. I might have have rather seen Denver. But, I mean, it's the Golden State Warriors. And you have to think about they have one less mouth to feed. You know, everybody's been talking about, oh, they don't have KD. Oh, they don't have KD. Oh, they don't have KD. I mean, in some ways it's kind of better. Don't get me wrong. KD is the greatest. I'm just going to go out and flat out say it. He's the greatest scorer on the planet right now. Scoring-wise, Better than LeBron James. Basketball player-wise, eh, debatable. But that's a conversation for a different day and a different episode. However, what we will discuss now is, you know, the Warriors might be okay without KD. I mean, they obviously have shown it. Two games, they're up 2 nothing. And like I said, it's just one less mouth to feed. Steph can take over. It's his team. No question about it. He takes the last shot. Clay gets way more shots. He gets going. So he's even more active on the defensive end. Draymond gets a few more shots. He's even more hyped up, even more, even better on the defensive end. They kind of just get to play like that 70, 73 and 9 team. Granted, that team did lose in the finals, but they start to play like that and that is a hard hard team to beat as we know and last time I checked the Portland Trailblazers do not have LeBron James which was an important piece to uh, how they got beat how that 73 and 9 team got beat in the finals so unless LeBron James is uh, putting on a Portland uniform anytime soon which he's not then I don't know KD being out might just hurt Portland I mean either way It's like pick your poison, really. It's like pick your poison. Do you want to just get mauled by KD, or do you just want 
everybody else to, you know, pick up the slack where KD leaves his points. So it's going to be rough for Portland, no doubt, but they still have a chance to protect home court, still make a series out of it. Now, I'm going to tell you now, if they lose game three, it's over. They might get swept or it's going to be a gentleman's sweep. It'll be one of the two. If they lose game three, I will just say they're going to get swept. I don't see them even winning a game. But hopefully they can take game three and keep a series of it. We'll see what happens. Now, on to the East. Oh, my goodness gracious. How about that buzzer beater? Kawhi Leonard, man. That guy is a beast, isn't he? That man, Kawhi, is on a mission. I told you on the last episode, Kawhi is on a mission. He's on a mission to put Toronto back on the map, at least for this season. And then, after he's done with that, he is trying to secure that bag, people. He is trying to secure that contract. He is on a mission to secure that bag, to show all the teams that are interested in him, all the teams that are in the running on the Kawhi sweepstakes, that, hey, you better pay me, and I'm showing you exactly why you need to pay me. That buzzer beater, crazy. Kawhi is clutch. Kawhi can get to his spot whenever he wants. Sheesh. Now, they do have their hands full, as we've seen against a solid, solid, deep, long, athletic, can spread the floor, can shoot the ball, Milwaukee Bucks team. I mean, poor, I mean, excuse me, Toronto had them right where they wanted them. But Milwaukee came right back. Milwaukee was supposed to lose game one, people. Point blank, period. Milwaukee was supposed to lose game one. They found a way to win. And that's why I think it's Milwaukee's year. I don't know if they're going to win the finals, but it's definitely their year in my eyes to make it to the finals. Toronto, do they have a chance? Yes. Is it written in stone? Of course not. But in my opinion, I just think it's Milwaukee's year. I think Milwaukee is too long, too athletic, and have too many bodies that you have to guard and have to be worried about if you're the Toronto Raptors. You got to get out and guard Brooke Lopez. And Marcus Gasol's older. He can't exactly get out there and, and guard Brooke. Closeouts might not be the greatest. He's holding his own, but still, it's a problem. Malcolm Brogdon is back now. That's just another guard you have to be weary of another shooter you have to be wary of Eric Bledsoe of course of course there's Giannis who I mean how can you really stop him when he wants to get to the rim he's gonna get to the rim that's just all there is you're not stopping him when he gets to the rim just so big so athletic so strong the only thing that's stopping him is his jump shot that's the only thing that's stopping him that's the only chance really the Raptors have right about now Chris Middleton Hit some big shots in the fourth quarter of game one. Even though he struggled in the first part of the game, he came alive in the fourth quarter when the Bucs needed him most. So I think the Bucs just have too much talent, super well coached by, you know, the Hawks former coach, Mike Budenholzer, probably gonna, who's probably going to win coach of the year. I think it's, it's going to be a tough task for Toronto. It is. Now, if they get game two on the road, no, all bets are off. I don't, I don't know. Ain't, ain't no telling what's going to happen when they go back to the six and Toronto and Drake gets there and maybe Drake puts on, puts on a Milwaukee Bucks jersey. <laughs> that was so funny. You got, I've said it in one of my other episodes. Drake is my favorite artist. When I saw it, he was trolling so hard, he had on 76ers shorts for that game seven. And I was like, nah, Drake, you did it. You did it again. You made me smile. Oh, man, that was great. But anyways, two hopefully great series to be. I To be honest, at first, first thought, I thought at least the Golden State series was going to go six. And it still might. It still it still very well could could go six. But seeing it now, yeah, I'm thinking more maybe four or five. I don't know. Sorry, Portland. But. Toronto and Milwaukee, I think that one's at least going six. Toronto will win some games at home. I, I I have no doubt in my mind they will win at least two games at home. 
So I think that series is at least going to go six. It's going to be interesting, man. I can't wait to see it shake out. But the problem is, man, I've been working so much, I can't even get to see the games like tonight. Couldn't really even see the game. Got off work late. Had to do something after work. Couldn't even see the game. Tragic. But when the finals roll around, and hopefully I'll be able to see the game. So we'll see what happens. I just don't like to watch them recorded because – I already know what's going to happen because I check the scores. I mean, I got to check the live scores. And so I just don't really like to watch it recorded because it takes the fun out of it. Like, I don't, I, it's, it's like, okay, I don't know what's going to happen right there in the moment. I don't know exactly how they got there, but I know it's going to win. It's not, it's just not exciting anymore. Anyways, moving on to the NBA draft lottery. Man. Got to tell you, I'm disappointed. Ping pong balls did not go our way. But the league did make a statement. This worked out well for the league. Basically, the league showed you that if you tank and you purposefully tank and you tank tank and you tank hard, doesn't matter. You still might not get the first pick. You might end up just like uh, New York did at number three. Or worse, he might up end up at number eight, like the Hawks did. Now, granted, the Knicks tanked way harder than the Hawks did. The Hawks played hard every night. They competed. Can't always say the same thing for the Knicks. But either way it goes, Hawks, I'm sure as all of you know now, have the number 8th overall pick and the number 10 overall pick as we got the, that number 10 overall pick from the Luka Doncic Trey Young trade of course we got that Mavs pick and I know a lot of people including myself are disappointed that we most likely aren't going to get to Zion but that is okay and it is okay because we can still address every single need that we need to. And GM Travis Slank, Schlink, sorry, has already said that, you know, they might package some picks to possibly move up. They might move back. Travis has said that there are a number of possibilities that they could do with all these assets, which is what I like to hear. He's keeping his options open and he is thinking best He's thinking of what's going to be best for the team. Therefore, he is not set on one thing. He's keeping his options open. I like it, Travis. Keep that same energy. So, we'll see. But I have pulled up a mock draft for you guys after the lottery results. And I'm going to read it to you right now. So, this is from Sam Smith on NBA.com. So it's Sam Smith's 2019 post-lottery NBA mock draft. He predicted the top 14. Obviously, the Hawks are in it. I'll run through these really quickly. At number one, the New Orleans Pelicans. Zion, obviously, would take Zion Williamson from Duke. And it'll be interesting to see, just quickly, if Zion decides to go back to school. Of course, we heard that his stepfather has come out and say that Going back to Duke isn't in the plans. It's not an option. He is ready to go to the Crescent City, which also, which is, of course, New Orleans. New Orleans. At number two, the Grizzlies are going to select John Morant, which we have heard multiple sources. Everybody has multiple sources that that is actually, like, factually true. Like, the Grizzlies are like, yeah, we're going to pick John Morant. So, Ja, you're probably going to go to Memphis. If I had to bet money on it, I would bet you're going to end up in Memphis, sir. Number three, Knicks going to pick R.J. Barrett, the Duke forward. Would not be surprising. Here's where it starts to get a little fun. The Lakers. Man, how nice did the Lakers end off being? Competed for the playoffs all year and lost just enough to sneak their way into the lottery. I think they were slotted at like 11 or something like that. And they end up with the fourth overall pick. Like, what the heck? But... That is the NBA showing you that, hey, 
Everybody has a legit chance now. Lakers are the prime example. So it's gonna so in this mock draft by Sam Smith, he is saying that the Lakers will select DeAndre Hunter, the Virginia forward, at number four, which would be nice. Good shooting for LeBron. Could create his own shot. Wouldn't be a bad pickup. At five, the Cavaliers would select Darius Garland, point guard out of Vanderbilt. Number six, the Suns will select Kobe White, the nice North Carolina point guard who is very quick, very fast, can get to the rim, can shoot a little bit, and, of course, he has all of that here. At number seven, the Bulls will select Brandon Clark, the Gonzaga forward. Number eight, our Atlanta Hawks would select Jarrett Culver, the Texas Tech guard. I love it. I love it. I love it. I will be a a a a okay if we get Jarrett Culver. I will be perfectly fine with that. He is a wing that we need. He is. He will be. A, he can be a shooter that we need as well. Play alongside Trey Young and Kevin Herter. He can be put at that three spot. Maybe the two put Kevin Herter at the three. I am perfectly fine with getting Jared Culver at eight. I like it. I like it. I like it. At number nine, the Wizards would select Jackson Hayes, the center out of Texas. I would be okay if we got Jackson too. So maybe if he falls down to 10, we could pick him up. We're going to see. We'll see what happens with that. But Jackson Hayes is a center I would like to pick up, too, if we did not pick up either Jared Culver or the next guy I'm about to bring up at number 10, Cam Reddish. That's right, people. We might not get the number one star from Duke, but we could get, I guess you could say, the number three star. But here's what uh, Sam Smith had to say about the Hawks possibly taking Cam Reddish, the Duke forward. With their second first round pick, as the as they have two from the trade last year, obviously with Dallas, you know, so blase blase. I'll skim through this a little bit. So there's he's saying that it's worth a chance since we have that second pick. It's worth a chance on a player like Cam Reddish, who has been highly regarded but underachieving. That can occur playing with the young stars Duke had and Williamson and Barrett. Plus, Coach K is the most creative. Strategist, so a third potential star could be obscured. Exactly. That is what you need to pay attention to in that statement. Having that third star could make Cam Reddish's numbers obscured, is basically what he was saying. Because you had the mouth to feed in Zion, you had the mouth to feed in RJ Barrett, and you had that third big mouth to feed in Cam Reddish. So it was hard for Cam to get his shots. Obviously, RJ Barrett was very it was a very ball-dominant forward, guard, whatever you want to call him. Cam Reddish was more of the spot-up shooter. Yes, he can create his own shot, but he more spotted up. Obviously, Zion got plenty of touches. But I think a lot of people are going to be asleep on Cam Reddish just because they're going to think, can he really play? When I believe Cam Reddish could ball out because he showed he could when Zion was out with that injury. He showed he could ball out, but he just never got the consistent opportunity. So he never really got into a groove. The only time he got into the groove when was Zion was hurt and he consistently got more shots and got to eat more and got to get in a rhythm more and was able to get in a rhythm more. So if we got Cam Reddish at 10, I'd also be happy with that. So these three prospects that would be close to falling to us in Cam Reddish, Jackson Hayes, and Jared Culver, I'm with it. Bring them on. I want all the smoke. All that smoke. Hawks land two out of those three prospects. Man, we're looking nice. We're looking good. We're sitting pretty. Going to have a nice young nucleus. Trey Young, John Collins, maybe Jared Culver, Cam Reddish. Going to have shooters. Then we'll only really need that big body. Who knows? Maybe we can trade some assets to get a a third first-round pick that possibly we could get Jackson Hayes. If we're lucky, we'll see. We'll see. Travis Slink is ready to make some moves. He said it. 
going to be real interesting to see. But my Hawks are in a good place, man. I am proud of my Hawks. They're doing what is necessary, making the moves. They had to, you know, take the tank, take the step back, blow it up. But they did what was necessary to now build a nice young core that they can win with for a long time if everything works out well, which I think it will. John Collins is going to be an all-star, I think, in the next year or two. Trey Young, I believe the same with him. He's going to be an all-star in the next year or two. We'll see what happens with the draft, who we draft, but I think that we'll that we'll select right. We've been right so far in the past two years on John Collins and Trey Young. I think that trend will continue. The Hawks are in a good spot, people, and I'm going to keep the same energy that I kept a while ago. The Hawks will be in the playoffs no later than a year from now, two years from now, depending on how you look at it. Basically, if the Hawks don't make the playoffs this upcoming season, they'll be in the playoffs next season. Book it. I'm saying it right now. You better believe me. The Hawks will be in the playoffs, if not this upcoming season, then the season after that. So in the next two years, I guess it is, since the next season hasn't started yet. The next two years, the Hawks will be in the playoffs. Book it. I said it. Dylan said it right here, right now. Hawks will be in the playoffs the next two years. Finally, I want to get into the Braves. I'm not really here to complain, I guess, guys. I mean, I'm not happy with where they are. If I said I was happy with where they are, I'd be lying. I'm not happy with a 23 and 21 record. I'm not happy with second in the NL East. With the way we've been pitching, I mean, it's good. It's It's definitely encouraging, but I'm still not happy about it. I'd be happy if we were in first and we had like a five-game lead in the NL East. Then I'd be happy. But I am encouraged and I am thankful that we are in the position that we are in with the way that we have played thus far. Again, offense have been fine. Pitching has been shaky. Bullpen has been very, very shaky. Don't want to say trash because I feel like that's kind of harsh, but I'm close to using that word. They've been very, very, very inconsistent. And I've said it. I've harped on it. I don't want to harp on it too much. But on a brighter note, they have played not too bad in recent times. Of course, they had the sweep against the Dodgers. I mean... The Dodgers, we caught them when they were getting hot. They were already hot. So I can't say I was too surprised with what I saw in that series. I thought we put up a little bit better of a fight. That 9 nothing loss was, ugh, that one, that one kind of extra hurt. But nonetheless, wasn't too surprised. But I feel like we bounced back ni- nicely against the Diamondbacks with the way we lost that first game. Then we won the next three. I was promised by that. The way we lost the game yesterday. Oh, excuse me, not yesterday, the day before, Monday, against the Cardinals. I mean, goodness, flipping gracious. What was it? It was a 14 to to 2, 14 to 3, 14 to 3. Goodness, flipping gracious. 14 to 3. It was 11 to nothing at one point. I was like, I was there at the game working. I was like, goodness gracious. Come on now, Braves. Get it together. But bounce back on. I'm getting my days mixed up. That game was actually Tuesday because today is Thursday. Well, today, technically Friday. But, anyways, the point being is that we bounced back nicely. Game after the 14 3 game, a 4 0 victory, and then last night, a 10 2 victory. So, very nice. We've done a good good job bouncing back. So, again, sit at 23 21, good for second in the NL East, a game and a half behind the Phillies. So, everything that the Braves want to accomplish is still right in front of them. Still a long, long way to go in the season. So, while I'm not ecstatic, about where we are can't nec- can't even say I'm necessarily happy with where we are I am encouraged I 
am thankful. And I am content. I'm okay for right now. But things still have to change. And I'm ready for things to change now. But, hey, man, that guy Austin Riley, he's balling, man. He's doing his thing up here. Finally got called up after raking, straight up raking for a while in Gwinnett. First game, home run. 438 feet. Come on now. Show them off. Show off the guns, Austin. I see you, boy. Then, last night, got a, uh, I believe it was a single and a double tonight. Drove home a run. Way to go, Austin. Hey, keep that same energy. Keep it for the rest of the season. I need it. We just keep adding weapons to the offense. I love it. Now we just need to add weapons to the pitching staff. We do that, man, we're going to be a tough team to beat because our offense right now, whoo-wee, we have one of the, if not the best offense in Major League Baseball. I mean, come on. Ten runs last night, four runs, three runs, three runs, four runs. We're at most most nights we're at least putting up three runs. We're averaging five runs a game. 5.2 runs. That's how many runs we're averaging. 5.2 runs a game. We can score with the best of them. We can. I mean, that's just what it is. Just got to get the defense behind it. Like I said, not the defense, the pitching. Defense is solid, too. Just got to get the pitching behind it. That's all there is to it, man. That's all there is to it. Get the pitching behind it. Get the right guys in there. I know Fulte came back, but he's been struggling. He was a part of that 14-3 loss. He was a major part of a lot of those runs. He gave up a lot of those runs. So, But we did get good Julio in last night's victory. So, I mean, it's up and down. It's inconsistent. So we just got to make it consistent and consistently good. Not consistently bad, consistently good. We do that. We can win a World Series this year. I promise you we can win a World Series this year. So to recap it all, I'm really excited about these NBA playoffs. I think they're going to be really good. Hopefully the Blazers cannot let this series get away from them too quickly. Would hate to see them get swept after they came all this way and put in all that work. After Dame made that crazy buzzer beater series ending shot. Hate to see it lose by. Hate to see it, you know, go by in a sweep or a gentleman sweep. That Toronto Milwaukee series, though, at least going six. It's going to be great. I can't wait to see how Toronto bounces back after having a good lead there in game one and then allowing Milwaukee to come back and win that game. We'll see if they come back kind of flustered, kind of frustrated. Going to be interesting to see maybe if they can bounce back and win game two. Also, the NBA draft lottery, the Hawks are going to be okay. Just because we didn't get Zion doesn't mean it's the end of the world. The sky's not falling. I promise you we will address all our needs. The Hawks will be fine, and they will be in the playoffs in the next two years. If they don't make the playoffs this upcoming season, they're going to be in the playoffs the season after. Book it. I'm telling you. Finally, the Braves, you guys know what you need to do. I don't have to keep saying it. Fix the pitching. Make it more consistent. Sure up the bullpen. Y'all know what to do. If y'all want to win a World Series, y'all know what to do. Austin Riley, I like him so far, though. I need him him to keep that same energy. Yes, he will go through rough patches, but I need him to keep that same energy. You're doing great so far, Austin. Keep it up. Keep it up, my boy. Thank you guys so much for listening. That is all for today's episode. Please like this video. Subscribe to my channel. Share this video. Comment below. I want to hear what you guys think. Tell me if you think Portland's going to make a series out of the Golden State series in the Western Conference Finals. Let me know who you think is going to win between the Bucks and the Raptors. Let me know who you think the Hawks are going to draft in the lottery. Let me know if you think the Hawks are going to make any significant moves in the NBA draft. Let me know what you think is going to happen with our Braves. 
Do we make moves at the trade deadline? We stay solid. What's going to happen with our Bravos? Again, please share, like, subscribe. Like this video. Subscribe to the channel. Share the video. Comment below. I want to hear from y'all forever and always. Thank you guys so much. I promise I will talk to y'all sooner than this past little gap. I got video coming for these podcasts, man. Got a, Like I said, got another podcast coming. It's going to be clutch. We finna have a lot of content soon. It's going to go crazy. So be on the lookout for that. But for now, peace.